name is April. Welcome to this week's DIY. I hope you guys are all doing so great. So happy to have you guys here with me this week. We are making a little farmhouse style tea towel ladder. I think it's so adorable. So here is the supplies I use, two of these little thankful signs, my hot glue, my E6000, one package of these little blocks from Dollar Tree and my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. And then I also used a sponge brush and a little paint brush. This little tea towel ladder is so adorable, so easy to make, but you just really, really have to take, you know, just wait for it to dry all the way. That's the key to making this turn out really good is just to really let it dry for hours and hours and hours. Um, the E6000 works really well. It just takes a long time to set up. So we're starting out by laying out our ladder rungs. And so I'm taking eight, um, eight three sets of eight blocks. And I did use um, equal parts dark and light because I find that the darker ones are a teeny tiny bit shorter. So I did stagger them the way that you can see here so that that way they glue together in an even straight line. So just like that. And so I'm just laying everything out just to see how wide I wanted the ladder to be. I found um, that that was the uh, length that I liked. It was perfect to be able to hang a little tea towel on. You do have to fold it a little bit skinnier um, to fit. This is a little tiny ladder, but it's so adorable for your kitchen counter or just to set up, you know, somewhere in your home with your Halloween, Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever decor. And so as you can see here, I, I was kind of figuring out if I wanted to add an extra one, but I found that was too wide. So I just decided to hot glue the little, three little blocks on each side inside and that made it just wide enough. And then I just pulled off that little piece. It's really easy to pull off. There's my little kitty. She follows me wherever I go. At the end of this video, video you guys, slow down, April. At the end of this video, I am sharing a garden update with you guys and my little kitty followed me out there too. So if you're interested, stick around for that. So the first thing I'm doing is just hot gluing the little blocks three blocks on each side inside. I didn't measure this, you guys. I just eyeballed it. I mean, you can measure it if you want it to be exact, but I think eyeballing it works out just fine. Next, I just laid out um, my little blocks. And the reason I did this is I just, you know, sometimes you get a defective one or one that isn't perfect and so I wanted to make sure before I started gluing them that they all fit together nice and even so I would suggest doing that um, so once I got them all figured out I just put a little E6000 and then just a teeny tiny dab of hot glue hot glue does add bulk and it also dries really fast so you have to be kind of quick if you're going to use the hot glue um, if you don't use hot glue, then the E6000, you know, it takes hours to set up. So it does, everything kind of slides around. And I just found that it worked better just to add a tiny bit of hot glue. That way it stayed together while I was building my parts. So I just continued putting a little E6000 on the side and then a little tiny dab of hot glue and did that to all of the pieces and then as you can see, I just wanted to let them dry a little bit. So while they were drying, I went ahead and started painting just the inside of these pieces of these little signs. I painted the inside. I definitely wanted to leave the buffalo check showing. And then I painted the, the words uh, white. And then that gave the blocks a little bit of time to set up. And then I started gluing them together. And the same thing, I just added a little bit of E6000 and a little dab of hot glue. And then I did find it to be um, a lot easier to do this on a hard surface. That way, once I got them glued together, I could kind of press down on them to make sure that they were nice and even. And so that's what I did. That's why I was using this board here. So any hard surface, 
and you know if you don't have a board you want to do it on your countertop just make sure it's covered so that you're not getting the E6000 on your countertop. So I just continued gluing everything together and then once I got all of those pieces together I set them aside to dry and then while they were drying I just put a little second coat on my two little signs and so I was kind of working back and forth, letting things dry a little bit, then going back to painting. It just worked out good that way. That way, you know, they had just a few minutes to, well, more than a few minutes to set up um, so that when I pick them up, I don't have to worry about them falling apart. And then I just painted everything. And next we're going to glue our little rungs on. This is the hardest part of this project, I think just kind of balancing your rungs until you put put both sides together and you can let it set up to dry. I don't know if anyone else has made one of these ladders with these. Maybe, you know, they, there's a better way. I'm not sure, but this is how I did it. And once everything dries, I absolutely love it. It is sturdy enough that I can, you know, move it around. I have not worried about it falling apart or anything. It feels like it's glued together really well. So I just added a bit of E6000 and a bit of hot glue and then just glued it down as you can see here until it wasn't going to fall and I was able to let go of it. And then I did that to all three. Next, I just added some E6000 to the top of each piece and then added the other side and flipped it over. And it does definitely move around because this E6000 does not set up quickly. So um, it slides around, but once you get it where you want it to be, just leave it alone, let it dry for several hours and then you'll be good to go. Mine feels really sturdy. I mean, nobody's going to be climbing this ladder. It's just for decoration, but I'm not worried it's going to fall apart. And I absolutely love it. I think it's so cute. So um, yeah, just let it dry and you'll be good to go. Isn't that so cute? I just love it. And there's what it looks like all done, all finished. I think it's so cute. And then I just added a little Dollar Tree um, dish towel or, or tea towel ladder to it. I just folded it a little bit skinnier and put it on there for decoration. I just love it. This next Dollar Tree DIY, I debated on whether or not I would share just because I did not take the time to really make the back look nice. But for me personally, I just made this for part of my display. Um, but I figured I would go ahead and show you how I made it. I used all of the items here that I purchased at Dollar Tree except for the apple barrel paint. I did get, I think I got it at Joann's. Um, so this is a little truck in Dollar Tree's Christmas decor that just came out and I pulled off the little Christmas tree and I actually used that. I hot glued it to the back to make um, a stand so that my little truck would stand up. And I just used apple barrel, some red apple barrel paint. You can use any color red that you like. I will put the colors that I used in the description box below. Um, and then I used uh, elephant gray, I believe, and some black for the tires. I just painted it traditional colors. And I think it's really super cute. I love this little truck. There's so many different things you could do with it. And then I um, used one of these little headbands, checkered headbands from Dollar Tree, cut it apart and just hot glued the material to the front of my pumpkin. I did not worry about making the back look nice at all, so I just hot glued it to the front and then cut off the excess. So as you guys can see, it does not look pretty on the back. And then I took a little dab of hot glue and some raffia and just tied a little bow around the top.
For some reason, it took me so long to make this little bow. I kept tying it and cutting it and untying it. In the end, it turned out pretty cute. I love this little pumpkin. You know, you could paint the little pumpkin or paint the truck a different color. There's so many different ways that you could switch this up. I just think these are so cute and you could put so many different things in the back of the little truck. Isn't that cute? I love it. Um, so that's all I did and then I hot glued the little stand on the back and I think it's adorable. Next I took this pumpkin filler from Dollar Tree and I really went heavy on the white paint because that's the look that I like. I have these in my home in a glass jug by my fireplace but you could just kind of dry brush the paint on if you like that look better and you can paint the pumpkins any different color that you like you could paint them orange this would also be really pretty just spray painted I don't use spray paint a lot just because I do my crafts indoors mostly so um, I like to paint I enjoy it and so I love the way it turned out I think it's beautiful I did use some peach colored and some antique white sunkissed peach and antique white on another one and I love the way they turned out you guys I hope you liked all of these DIYs I hope you're all having a beautiful day I hope you enjoy my garden update at the end I really appreciate every single one of you for sticking with me and watching my videos and I will see you next time bye